well. Well, well, well. Never a dull moment for the LSU Tigers, isn't it? I, um... You know, I was I was looking forward to maybe just a, a few hours where I could just watch the Jazz destroy the Memphis Grizzlies and not have to worry about Eric Gilbert or transfers or anything else. Just let the LSU team be what it is. Let them prove themselves. Let them shine on. But no, 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 no. More change is afoot, and I'm wondering if this is a good change or if it's a bad change. It depends on who Coach Ed Ordron gets in there, because uh, he's gonna he's gonna need to replace a coach very quick here. Offensive line coach James Craig has been fired. This is due to recruiting violations that Clemson, that Dabo Sweeney's Clemson reported. This obviously is in reference to Tristan Lee. Now, interestingly enough, you know, I've talked quite often, I've still kept in touch with with Laura Lee, and, and sometimes with Tristan, since... He made his commitment with Clemson. And very interestingly, the moment uh, I posted that Wil- Wilson Alexander was reporting that LSU was uh, firing James Craig, the second I posted that, Laura Lee men- uh, messaged me unsolicited out of nowhere, which, you know, isn't a hundred percent rare or anything like that, but uh, it came out of came out of nowhere, and she's very concerned for Craig, you know, and uh, obviously she said that you know her Tristan got along with him and all that, but obviously there was a recruiting violation with a Clemson player, and I can't think of anybody else that LSU has gone for except for Tristan Lee. That, that they share. That, you know, that LSU and Clemson share. Especially on the offensive line. To me, I feel like this is something that happened with, with Tristan Lee maybe last year. Or maybe even after the commitment, before the signing. Who knows? It's something. It's something about that. I, I really do believe. But we we know for a fact that Clemson reported recruiting violations from James Craig. So, what did Craig get into here? What, what was he up to? Was he trying to, you know, steal Tristan Lee at the, at the 11, 11th and 59th minute, 11th hour, 59th minute? I am not sure. But here's the thing. LSU needs to get in Kevin Mawai right now and stop messing around with the most important position group, arguably, on the team, the offensive line. You know, Cardell Thomas came in and very highly regarded. I know he had the injury, but he's way far behind on his development than he should be, and I think that's because of James Craig. Anthony Bradford, for all the the hype that he's gotten, all that, there's times where he's still... his statue. That's because of James Craig. I, I feel like James Craig cannot develop offensive linemen as much as his pedigree and his name and the Joe Moore Award may say. 
I think you could just give the Joe Moore Award to Joe Burrow as well, along with the other 19 awards, to be honest. Um, you know, there were some performances that were great from some, some Tigers offensive linemen throughout 2019, of course. But there was also some absolutely horror show moments where Joe Burrow just made some freakish plays. Where Joe Burrow just made everything look better than it was. Let's be honest. Yeah, there was those plays against Georgia where, you know, he's, uh, you know, Joe Burrow has that protection for nine or ten seconds. You know, that offensive line could be could be fantastic in protection at times. But when all those veteran pieces went to the NFL, especially a guy like Lloyd Cushenberry, who masked a lot of deficiencies, you know, Damian Lewis as well, when those two went to the NFL, I mean... <sighs> The amount of combinations that James Craig used, starting combinations, was outrageous. I believe it was 13 different combinations out of 15 games in 2019. That is just crazy. And every single game, I believe in 2020, had a different lineup just crazy. I'm, I'm trying to think of, of games where they had the same consistent lineup, and I'm thinking of only a few, and if so, uh, guys were changed very quickly or, or subbed out. You know, you look at a guy like Chase and Hines, who was supposed to develop into a center. It never happened. Um, you know, James Craig has been ripped on as a horrible recruiter for a long time, but like, you can't argue with his recent results. He's definitely stepped it up with getting Will Campbell, with getting Lucas Taylor, Bo Bordelon, potentially Emory Jones, hopefully. But at the same time, if LSU misses on Will Campbell, if LSU misses on Bo Bordelon, then that's just, that's a catastrophe. That's, that's, that's a fireable offense right there by itself. So to get those guys was just the least of what James Craig should have accomplished, in my opinion. Will Campbell should be an LSU guy. Bo Bordelon should be an LSU guy. Lucas Taylor should be an LSU guy. Emory Jones should be an LSU guy. But the thing is, he cannot find a center. Uh, it just seems like we cannot recruit a center. We cannot recruit guards well at all on the interior. I just I don't... I don't think James Craig knew what he was doing with the offensive line coming up. I don't think he had a solution. I think, you know, you had Marlon Martinez, Marcus Dumerville, Thomas Perry, uh, you, just a lot of guys who barely saw any time at all. And we, we really don't know if how well they're going to be because they didn't see very much time at all. Charles Turner can be included in that, where there's just these guys who haven't played at all, and we don't know what they've got in the tank or, or where they're at because of how little they've played. We saw some reps in the spring game, and it was not too prom it was none too promising. Most of Ty Davis Price's uh, 65 yards were from him bouncing it to the outside, from him using, you know, manipulating those failed protections for his own gain. Usually uh, he had guys right in his face in the backfield. Uh, it was, you know, where is LSU going on the offensive line this year? I mean, losing James Craig right now at this moment is not a good thing at all. It's not good at all. But would it have been a good thing to go through 2021 with you know such a great team, such a great lineup, with James Craig still on as offensive line coach? You know, with underdeveloped offensive linemen, with a no fixed starting lineup. 
Is that worth rolling the dice? You know, once the recruiting violations came, I think uh, this the decision was pretty easy for Coach Orgeron. You know, Craig is one of his buddies from USC. Um, I'm sure it was hard to pull that trigger. He, he could have fired Craig easily last year. You know, there was a, I think there was four games where we rushed for less than two yards last year. All against the biggest opponents, Texas A&M, Auburn, Alabama. So, like, are you kidding me? Um, you know, rushed for 1.4 yards or something against Mississippi State. Like, are you... 27 rushes, 32 yards against Auburn. Just embarrassing. This offensive line, I just, it is such a question mark coming into next season, and even more so. But at the same time, if this offensive line can find the right coach, someone like a Kevin Mawai who has that LSU history, who has that Hall of Fame pedigree, who's really stepped it up as a, as a coach lately, who's really just found a beautiful rhythm. I, I feel like he could be that guy. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's... It would be interesting to see Kevin Mawai return to LSU. I I would be heavily in favor of Kevin Kevin Mawai returning to LSU. You know, back in January, LSU were looking for an offensive line analyst. And they were looking through a lot of different guys and Coach Orgeron was in contact with Kevin Mawai, we were told, and Kevin Mawai turned it down. He was going to accept the Arizona, I mean, sorry, not the Arizona State. He was going to move from Arizona State to accept the Indianapolis Colts assistant offensive line job <laughs> in the NFL. <laughs> and so he was not going to be an analyst. Now... Could he be persuaded? Could he be turned, perhaps, from the Colts? I think that's a possibility. And I think it's a, you know, Mawai would be a hire that would instantly excite that offensive line core. But, you know, that, it's got to happen soon. LSU has got to get an offensive line coach within the next week, week or two at the most. In the next week and a half, they have to sign that new guy. Because James Craig... James Craig could not develop these offensive linemen. There's so much developing to do. There's so much work to do. They're still so behind. I just... There's so many bodies. There's so much potential on this offensive line. You know, when you see a guy like Dari Rosenthal handling B.J. Ojolari on the edge like that, it makes you feel like there's there's some there's something strong there. I mean, he's handling an NFL talent, bossing him around. There's something there. Um, you know, when you see Cam Wire having strong reps, there's there's something there. The guy shows strong versatility, ability to play right tackle or left tackle. And then you got, you know, Ed Ingram, who is a, just a pillar, a cornerstone. Liam Shanahan, he's, he's, he's a perfect, perfect shotgun snapper. But his pass blocking... Fantastic, but when he's his run blocking is horrible. I've got to say it. He's got to pick that up. Chase and Hines as well. You know, pass. He's all right in the run. He's ghastly. 
you know, the magic of LSU's 2019 offense was how balanced it was. Look at the look at the numbers, look at the plays. It's I think it was like 50 more 51 more passing attempts than rush than rushes. So that offense was supremely balanced and that's what kept opponents constantly off off guard. Um, the pass would set up the run, the run would set up the pass, then Joe Burrow would start running it, and it wouldn't really matter if our offensive line couldn't, you know, keep a protection for longer than three seconds. The ball was already gone, or Joe was already picking a hole. That's the thing. We need a scheme smart, player smart, offensive line coach who's willing to Go that extra mile to develop these guys. There's so much talent there. Thomas Perry is, you know, he's a he's another legacy tiger who I feel like could be damn good. Marcus Dumerville came to LSU as this highly touted, you know, powerhouse, and we barely even seen him on the field. Uh, it goes on and on and on for for guys like that, and. Anthony Bradford, you know, so much has been said, little has been seen, you know, there's so many guys on this LSU offensive line, Austin Deculus, so many have said kick him inside, so many have said just get him off the line, is he still that right tackle, is LSU comfortable with him at right tackle, I'm not so sure. The offensive line is really concerning me right now. And it's not just because the players don't have a coach. You know, the players don't have a position guy, someone they can look forward, you know, look, look right at and say, hey, what are we supposed to do? Where are we going here? What, what's the vision? It's more, be, it's more the problem is that it's just there's no direction. There's no development with it. There's no, when you see Andre Carter, when you see Durante Jones, you see Jake Peets, you just see growth coming from their involvement, just complete growth from those players. When you see the offensive linemen, you're just not, you're not seeing those steps being taken. And I don't know if that was because of Craig or, it, it seems like it has to be. I, you can't say that James Craig is the worst offensive line coach in the world. You can't say he's the best. And you know what? I think there's times maybe we bought into the to the hype. I know there's a lot of Craig haters out there. I'm not a Craig hater. But I was definitely a Craig skeptic. Um, you just can't see offensive line play like that and be down with it. This, this may be a, this may be a move we look back on and say, even though Orgeron was forced into this, it was not only for the best, we've, we now got the best out of our guys because of it. That's at least what I'm hoping for. I'm not sure that's what we'll get. But this is about Coach Orgeron hiring the right guy again. You know, he most likely pulled that off by hiring Jake Peets, Durante Jones, DJ Mangus, Blake Baker, Andre Carter. Those seem to be all solid hires. You know, unproven, but they seem to, you know, have the right mentality, win or lose, that, that I want my LSU Tigers to have. And now he's got to find that offensive line coach to match that that mentality. Someone who's going to bring that aggressive steal to the offensive line. Because, you know, with these quarterbacks, we're going to need it. And that's why, you know, with all that's going on, it, it's, it's tipping the scales in Max Johnson's favor, like, even more. If if you if you doubted if he would start, if you wondered if he would start, I think he's almost got to start whether you whether you were a Max fan or not. 
whether you were a Max supporter or not. I happen to definitely be a Max supporter. I love Miles too, but I, I, I think Max is the guy. And the reason I do is not only because of the mobility, it's the mobility of the arm and the mind, but when you look at an offensive line that is now rudderless, that is now lacking development, um, lacking leadership, um, Max Johnson's mobility, his uh, backfield news is going to be needed all the more in 2021. But... Um, you know, we'll see. I, I really think that there's going to be some strong leadership coming out from this offensive line in reaction to this. There has to be. Uh, look for guys like Dari Rosenthal, Ed Ingram, Cam Wire, Austin, Decul- Austin Deculus to be those uh, leaders to kind of rise the offensive line group up, try and get them going. But um, there's there's going to be some tough decisions that are going to be made. Uh, you, not every fan is going to like the lineup that our coach picks, our new offensive line coach. Not everyone's going to see the vision immediately. But I think if we see that new mentality, that fresh intensity, that uh, alive, those eyes that are alive, hands that are that are that are moving, feet that are dancing. No false steps, never backing themselves into a corner. Uh, I think if we see that, it doesn't. It doesn't matter who's starting. I think it's this is all about the coach that's coming in, the mentality, and how well he can forge that chemistry with that off- offensive line. It's all about chemistry. How can he get that chemistry from that offensive line? Can he watch enough film, enough tape, and identify? where those little pockets of chemistry are. You know, if Cam Wire and Ed Ingram on the left are are more dominant than Rosenthal and Ingram on the left, so be it. If, uh, you know, Cam Wire should be moved to the right with, with Rosenthal and Ingram on the left, so be it. If that means senior, super senior Austin Deculus, national champion Austin Deculus, has to sit or potentially move to guard, so be it. Um, we're, we're trying to win a national championship. And that was evident when Coach Orgeron did not hesitate. Instead, pulled that trigger when given the opportunity. We, LSU can't suffer any more drama, any more headlines, any more fools, any more ridiculousness you know after the recruiting violations reported Craig had to go but yeah we'll see Uh, definitely like the video if you enjoyed it share it please 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 share it Uh, subscribe to lsuodyssey.com if you if you believe in our work if you enjoy it um, post a comment down below. Tell me what you think should be the starting five offensive line. Who should be the start? You know, who who should be that offensive line coach that we go out and get? And um, did you think that James Craig, recruiting violations or not, should Orgeron have uh, gotten rid of him right at this moment? But yeah, LSUodyssey.com signing off.